so what we have to understand is we have to first understand what caused the rise of the west today the west it it is about 12% of the world's population but it controls more than 80% of the world's economy i mean uh, roughly i'm saying maybe 70% or so but it it controls the entire economic system the global system the global institutions the imf the world bank the uh, reserve currency is the dollar so they control everything it's just 12% of the population but they control the entire economy and the entire global system so what caused the rise of the west the west became wealthy and powerful through aggression through imperialism through genocide through mass murder and through pillage that's what caused the west to become so wealthy and powerful today the west is not in a position to extract more wealth from india or from china they are still trying to do that from africa but it may not last for long so their sources of their growth have dried out the only way they have grown is through stealing other people's money and wealth and treasure for centuries through through slave markets through wholesale slaughter wholesale siphoning of the economy of india etc so that's how they grew today that's not happening so the west is now in decline and when a powerful uh, when a big power is in decline it becomes more aggressive and it becomes more desperate so that's why i expect that we may see more wars in the coming decade couple of decades as the west declines it will try to lash out and try to retain whatever power it can if not through diplomacy if not through the economic means then through military means so that is something we may see now it is clear that india is rising china is also rising china's growth is now not not as as rapid as it is as it used to be it's not growing at 10 12 13% per year it's now growing at around 5% or 6% per year that's what their official figures are maybe it's lower than that india on the other hand is now most likely going to grow at 7 8% per year if we do it right maybe even 10% per year if we get, if we get it right so india is going to rise for some time maybe the next couple of decades china it's going to grow but not so fast the west is going to decline so that is the potential for trouble because the west is going to lash out and try to retain whatever it can through military means the united states is the major hegemonic power today it is still the only superpower in the world china is not yet a superpower the us is the sole global superpower so then you have this situation of a thucydides trap when the east is rising the west is declining the us doesn't want to give up its hegemony so you may have some kind of um, violent reaction and they may try to impede your progress they have this doctrine they don't want any power to even become in the future a potential competitor so if they see a country that may be a small economy today but it has the potential in the next 20 years of becoming a big power then they will try to sabotage their growth right now so that is what we may, we may witness we meaning india we may witness from the us they may try to step up the breaking india activities they may try to fund various uh, organizations or political parties within india through various ngos they may try to interfere with the internal domestic affairs of india they may try to uh, instigate a color revolution like they did in ukraine like they did in the arab spring yeah. etc so these activities may rise now right now what we are seeing as i mean yesterday i believe that lady victoria victoria newland the deputy secretary of state of the us she came to india she is famous for instigating the euro maidan revolution which was a coup d'etat that, that was uh, successfully carried out in the in the in ukraine which precipitated the precipitated the entire 2022 russia ukraine war in the long run so she is a color revolution regime change expert and she came to to india yesterday and she met with various what she calls thought leaders who is she to decide who are our thought leaders we'll decide right who is she to decide anyway so you are seeing this kind of interference from the us in india this may in the coming years be on the rise they may try to see they they would like india not to rise very fast or very much and they would not want to see a strong stable nationalistic government in power at the center they would prefer to see a weak pliable government at the center so they can they can keep india at a middle middle income i mean at, at a at the position of a small power not a major power and use it to counterbalance china to some extent and when there is no more use for india you can disintegrate india so that would be the end game or the long term vision that the americans have for india so we have to be careful about that we have to make sure that they are not allowed to interfere too much 
in the name of democracy and all that, freedom of speech and all that in inter- India's internal affairs. So that is something the government will have to take care of. But that is the kind of approach you may see vis-a-vis India and vis-a-vis China, you may actually see a hot war. If the Chinese make a move prematurely for Taiwan, for instance, then you could see a war happening between the US and China because the Americans simply cannot afford to lose Taiwan. If they lose Taiwan, they will instantaneously lose whatever superpower status they have. People will stop trusting the word of the US that their guarantee as the world's policeman and the world's arbiter of power no longer holds. So then people will make their realignment and try to align with China because China seems to be on the ascendancy. So the Americans simply cannot afford to lose, lose Taiwan. So right now the things are in flux. The entire global system is, in, is realigning itself. We are witnessing a rapid bipolarization of the world and things we, we need to still see where it goes. But that's how I see the world going. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanavad. Namaskar.